Hello and welcome. Yes, another project today. We're starting, and uh, this is a a complete um, scratch build from start. Now this chassis is a Black Star HT5 head uh, chassis, and I've got the the case and everything for it. The usual thing with Black Stars is the throwaway boards, so we just kept the chassis and uh, and, the, and the case and everything. And we're going to build an amp into this into this chassis. You can see that there. Um, I've used this for a few uh, experiments and stuff when I've been messing about with things. And now I'm just going to do a proper job with it. We're going to use one of those primary winding transformers that we've just used in that amp maker kit. And as I said, I'd already bought one of these for this project. I would get all the bits together. When Lee, who's got the shop, gave me the kit, which and the kit obviously had these in because these transformers, although they're on Primary Windings website, they come under they're called Amp Maker Transformers, so they come under that name. So they're quite easy to find on their website. So what have we got here? So we've got output uh, main power transformer, and then we've got. An output transformer now this output transformer came off um, a cinema amp and I've actually got two of these I'm not sure which one of the two we're going to use the other one is here which has used for a bit of testing and I think it's actually that one that we're going to use and that you that ran a pair of PL82 valves in push-pull Strip that off a uh, scissor wrap. Now, as most of you know, who are uh, into building valve amps and things and repairing them, uh, tube amps, whatever, you'll know that most of those scissor amps, with the exception of the other ones with the C six P sixes in, were series filament and uh, series filament. Unless you can isolate it from the mains with the transformer, is pretty useless for guitar. So how am I going to run those PL82 tubes? The heater filaments for those the filaments are 16.5 volts at 300 milliamps. So that's how we're going to run them. We're going to use this transformer um, to run the heaters. But we're not just using the PL82s the output stage we're also using some some of the p valves for the preamp tubes so we're going to use a pcc85 for the phase inverter and uh, you often see ecc85s used as phase inverter very similar just the um, just the, the filaments at a different voltage and uh, we're going to use a pcf80 which is a pento triode valve so why am i using these valves well, it occurred to me, and like most people, I've got tons of these valves lying around that they, that they can't use. And uh, most of them were television valves that were used in televisions. So I thought, hmm, I've got loads of these, the mullards, the, the good quality. I've got some that are still wrapped. They're still in the in the cardboard wrappers, the, the brand new tubes. So... If you look at a, if you look at the price of a of a pair of VL eighty fours now, they're a lot of money. And by the time you've bought a couple of preamp tubes, you, you're probably into seventy pounds. So this transformer cost about thirty pounds. I've already got all the tubes. That I've picked those up in deals and things. you know over time. So the idea of this project is to see if we can build. A really good guitar amp out of tubes that you wouldn't normally use you they're just lying around in your you know in your stash and things and that's the idea of this project so in the end oh dear here we go here comes pink so at the end product have we built a guitar amp that works really well um, can we utilize more of these tubes build more of these amps or will the project be a bit of a flip that's basically what what we're doing aren't we pink so the thing the first thing we've got to do with this project is 
is this transformer and as some of you may know on this channel if you've watched a few of my videos if there's one thing I can't stand it is metal work I have got to cut a hole to drop that transformer into there um, because it's a drop through the chassis now they used to do these in in two forms um, where you could just have it stood on the chassis like this one but unfortunately they don't do those anymore they only do the the drop through one so I've got to cut the hole this transformer you can see the wires all need they need redoing um, to make that usable again but these are good transformers it's a bit rusty on the top but it's okay so we're going to make use of that we are a bit limited for room in this HT5 chassis although if, if you look in one of these it, you've got this huge PC board all the tubes uh, the tube sockets are underneath it and I don't want that that's useless so we're going to use these which are which are the Vox AC30 type um, terminals and you can see those there thinks he's checking it out make sure it's in good order so we're going to use a couple of those and uh, I've now I've drawn a schematic out for this amp which we'll take a look at so I've kind of brushed brushed the schematic up um, to uh, give me an idea of what I want in this amplifier so let's have a look at uh, some of the tubes so I've got PL82 and these test really good I've got a pair of these I've got some of these new as well and um, so we've got a couple of those PCF80 and there you can see PCF80 so if we look in here just open this as well and I've got pink here pushing my arms as I'm pushing my hands while I'm trying to show you that so we've got that mullard one there he's in good order get off pink I'm afraid she wants some treats and then I've got uh, Mazda um, ECC85 you can see that's brand new so these tubes all good tubes now if you were buying these tubes off eBay you're probably looking at you probably get those for about 20 25 pound with the postage something like that so with the transformer which was about I think just less than 30 quid you, you got like 55 pound there so that's a cheaper option than going for the the L84s and the other thing is and, and your preamp valves your 12x7s and the other thing is it's, it's just a shame to let these tubes go to waste you know they just lie around and never get used and uh, I have got quite a lot of them um, and also some some other now some of the you know some of these tubes I've got as well such as EF80 that's brand new as well um, yeah a lot of these are used in radios and things like that but you know I'm sure these could be utilized into guitar amps we're not looking for a lot of gain on this amps you know we don't want it to be a game monster or anything else there's another one EF8 so these are 6.3 so they, these can be used in in other projects as well um, brand new EF86 there well I've already used those and most people have put those in guitar amps brand new PL82 there and uh, piece uh, PCF 808 another tube there we could possibly use so over time I'm going to uh, I'm going to look at all these tubes and uh, if, see what we can eventually get into guitar amps projects and things um, and I'll just keep ordering these transformers now now this transformer you have a look I bought off eBay and yeah it's Chinese I can everybody go whoa it's Chinese but I've tested this this transformer and it works really well um, I've got a bit of flickering I think that's pink causing that um, so this yeah so this works really well it's 18 volts and uh, it does give a bit more than than 18 volts on there I think it's about 21 volts so we're going to get obviously as the current drawn draws down we're going to get we're going to get some uh, some voltage drop there we may have to use some resistors to, to to balance the voltage up but that's not a huge problem and that is something i've done before now this transformer 
And this is another one of those transformers. This one was even cheaper. So depending on, on how many tubes you're putting in these uh, arms. Pink, go away, please. Thank you. We're busy. And don't swear at me. So this this is f uh, four, 40 watts, uh, 40 VA. And it's got a rating of about... So this transformer is 2.2 amps. And this one is on 1.5 amps on the heaters. So it, again, it's all a case of calculating. Now, most of these P tubes are 300 milliamps, so they draw. So we've got 600 milliamps, and then a couple of tubes, uh, preamp tubes. So we've got 1.2 amps. So this transformer would probably run this project comfortable. This one is 2.2 amps. That will run it easily with with plenty to spare. So what else? So how am I going to wire up these these valves? So these these two tubes, the PL eighty two is a sixteen point five five volts. So I'm going to wire those up in parallel. Now the PCF eighty and the PCC eighty five are nine volts. So I'm going to wire those up in series. From series, I'm going to go straight to the to the, uh, the filament wires on the transformer and then I'm going to in series and then I'm going to wire these straight from the transformer in parallel the PL82's um, so I'm going to take up that 18 volts that we'll have with these uh, I'll, uh, that way I can wire these in series they'll be totally separate uh, from these from these two so the two preamp valves will be totally separate from the power valve filaments so just so we wire from there in series, come back to there, then we wire in parallel to the uh, to the PL82s, and then we've just got to balance up and get the voltage right. And really, we need that to be within five percent of that sixteen point five volts. Now I've also got, and uh, I've not got those in here with me, but I've also got a pair of PL84 output tubes. These tubes are 9 watts dissipation. The PL84 is 12 watts dissipation. And it is, and that's that is different to an LH4, by the way. They are slightly different. Not the, they're not a lot of some of these tubes, um, like the PCC85, is identical to an ECC85 except for the filament voltage. But the PL84s are not the different, they're not the same as the LH4s. This this transformer, this power transformer, has two windings, and we'd looked at these before in that amp make video. So we just hone that up to the camera, and you can see you've got zero two seven five or zero one ninety. Now we're going to use the one ninety, and I'm just looking for my calculator. That one ninety volts. If we times that by 1.414, we get 268 volts. The limiting value on these PL82s on the on the, the anode, on the, the plate and the screen is 250 volts. That's its maximum limitation. But I would think by the time the, the, the current draws draws them the voltage down, we'll have about 220. And that's really what we're going to be working from. So that's that's basically what we're going to do. That's what this project's about. It's all about using these tubes. And although we're going to have a guitar amp out of this at the end of it, part of this is 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 a bit of a, a test to see if we can we can utilize these valves for a guitar amp. Now I've seen some of these valves utilized in hi-fi amps, uh, but I've not seen them utilized in guitar amps before. So we're going to see um, if we can make a really good guitar amp with these tubes. The gain factor, you know, we're not dealing with a 100% gain factor like we are on ECC83s. Um, the PCC85, which I'm not sure, I've just done with that now. But anyway, the, the, there it is. The PCC85 has a gain factor of about 55. And uh, uh, I'm not sure about the pentode on that PCF80, but the triode on there only has about 18 so that's around what a 12 a single spot of a 12 au7 would be cc82 like one half of that so we're not expecting to get this amp so it, you know it's overdriving and it's got 
loads of gain when we're not looking for that. I want this to be a relatively clean amp and, and maybe it'll just overdrive a little bit when it's cranked up flat out. Won't be a particularly loud amp and, uh, and again I'm not bothered about that. I, I don't need lots and lots of volume. We, this is going to be a low, you know, a low wattage amplifier and that's the general idea of it. But also part of this project is just to see if we can use some of these tubes and be successful. There must be tons of people that's got boxes and boxes of these. Every time you go on forums and read about, you know, tubes and things, somebody will say, oh, I've got a box full of those. And they just sat there doing nothing. So it's a shame. You know, I've got, not only have I got these Mazda tubes, I have actually got a, a shed load of Mullard tubes all these p valves and things a shed load of them and they're just you know it's they're still new in the boxes it's a shame for them to go to waste so this is what this project's going to be about now also as i've acquired a lot of these tubes over time and i'm looking for that i can't see where that's gone now but, but amongst all these tubes and the tubes that we won't use out of all these tubes I've got is the rectifier tubes. Most of the, the rectifier tubes are half wave rectifier tubes and most of those will have a Y. Uh, so PY, EY, whatever. But that indicates, Y indicates half rectification um, according to what I've read on the figures and things. They are useless. Now I have got quite a few uh, rectifier tubes. So if any of you out there happen to be looking for any uh, any, re any half wave rectifier tubes uh, drop me an email um, I've got I've got some new ones and uh, anybody wants those you're welcome to them I can if you you know if you build, some people might be restoring a, a television that's got them in or a radio or something like that um, please email me because uh, they are just sat about doing nothing and they won't get used the reason there's no point in using the, the problem with half wave rectifier tubes is you need two of them uh, you know on a project like this and the problem there is you've the, the 300 milliamps on the heaters you've got 600 milliamps there where a four wave rectifier tube you've you've only got one heater one filament so they're useless we're not going to use those and they're inefficient so it, it makes sense to use solid state rectification don't get me wrong i do like I do like uh, rectifiers valve rectifiers in in guitar amps and and i think they have the place but not on this project right so uh, here we are we've uh, i've built this up and uh yes as i said before my metal work is not the greatest um, but this is a project it, it, it's not something i'm building to sell or building for someone else um if i was then someone else would be doing the metal work and not me um but yes, it's just merely a project um, to prove our point of these using these valves. So let's just have a look what we've got. So if we've got these, I've got these, and they are installed these really well. They, they just attach off. They're not quite straight, but we won't. Uh, if you if you blink quick, you won't notice. Um, so yeah, so we've got those. Those are for the capacitors and whatnot, electrolytics. Um, cathode bypass resistor whatever we've got this for the preamp section here and then I've, I've got one across here because this one this one we're going to use for the heaters uh, for the tubes we've got pilot light in there nice chunky main switch and we've got four um, four valve seats in there uh, that one's a different seat because it's got a uh, screen shield on it now if we spin it round like a show uh, we can also see that we've got this very hefty um, overkill <laughs> really overkill uh, uh, bridge rectifier but I've, I've got them in my jar and I thought oh, I'll use those just use one of those so we've used that um, let's just turn it over and have a look at, uh, at the top there so we've got um, and although that says EC83 on there that's from a previous project so these will be the PL82, PL84 valves whichever we put in uh, we can put either in 
got the transformer there for the uh, for the heaters we've just got to balance that voltage with resistors we've got a um, amp maker uh, power transformer there and we've got this uh, slightly rusty uh, output transformer uh, but it's good quality if we look if we just hold it up there and just hone the camera across there we will be using the 190 volt tapping on this not the 250 um as i've said before and then the the heat the 6.3 heaters will uh, what would be the 6.3 for the heaters which we're not using for the heaters we're just going to use that for said pilot light so that's it really um i've knocked that up quick as well because obviously i don't want to be spending hours doing that this is a project um the other thing is i'm um, at some point i may take this amp to bits and use it for, for another project so i'm kind of i don't go mad on getting them absolutely perfect for me it, this is just a test bed and you can see there's various holes around because it's there's been other things on this at some point um so there we go so the next thing that i am going to do is wire up those heaters because before we do anything we need to get those heaters right for this project to be a success and it shouldn't be a problem but famous last words so we've got the output tubes there we're going to wire those in parallel and the voltage for those is 16.5 remember we've got 18 and then we've got two at nine volts and we're going to wire those in series so we'll have 18 volts I don't know whether we'll have to drop the voltage on these um, but we are going to drop the voltage on these and that is for two reasons the uh, and I, I'll have to look at the voltages but the voltages for the heaters on the PL84s and the PL82s are slightly different but they are within five five percent of each other in other words if I go five percent under on the PL82s that will be 5% over on the PL84, so we'll get away with that. Right, I've done quite a bit more work on this amp. We've added the second board. Last time I mentioned about the heaters, and I've done some experimenting with those, and we shall come back to that later. I have actually ordered some parts for that. But for the time being, we're moving on to this, the the uh, wiring this, this amp up. So we've got four nodes got node 1 which is 33 microfarad at 350 volts remember we've only got 206 roughly about 268 volts that's with the tubes out so we'll have even less with the tubes in probably about 220 ish so 350 volts working is plenty uh, and i've just got four uh, 33s for the uh, for each node so the second node is for the screens there and they go down to those two 1.5k screen resistors um, third node is for the PCF80 which is that there and this fourth node is for the single triode of one half sorry one half triode of this PCC85 and then the other half which is the uh, phase splitter phase inverter so let's have a nosy at um if we look over here now i've um i, st I need to add a cathode resistor in there for, for the pentode that is going to be 820 ohms for the cathode um 33k for uh, for the grid stopper 220k for the screen uh, on the pentode and you can't see that because of that capacitor and we've got 100k for the plate 47 nanofarad coupling capacitor into a 220k uh, grid stopper there so that that's the first stage there which i've got that in there which is the pentode into that 220k then we've got another 820 ohm which you also can't see because of that resistor that's the cathode for cathode resistor for the um 
triode section of the PCFA to the single triode. And then we've got 100k for the plate, coupling capacitor there, and then that's going to run onto this board. And then, so all this lot here is the phase inverter and the, uh, sorry, that's going to run onto this section where we're going to have the piece, first stage of the PCC85. And then that's going to run onto this, which is all the phase inverter and whatnot on there. And that's basically where we've got to with that. Right, this amp is finished except for the heaters. We're still waiting for those resistors and the turns ratio test, which we need to do to find out the impedances on this transformer on the secondaries. So that's the that's what we're going to have a go at now. So we've got five wires on there. We've got black, blue, yellow, and white and green. Right, so we've got this um, turns ratio thing going on. Um, so we've got, you can see we've got 30 volts on there and about a volt on there. So that tells us that, uh, jumping about a bit, that tells us that the turns ratio is something around 30 to 1 on there. Um, 30, 30, to, in fact that's just creeping up a little bit more on there. If we just ease that and that. So I'm doing this with a Variac by the way. So if you haven't got a Variac, you, you'd probably find this quite difficult to do. Really, you need a Variac to do this. So we're looking at... 32, 32 volts in, 30, nearly 33 volts in, and we're looking at one volt out there. So that's roughly our turns, our turns ratio there, 33 to 1. And that was the black and blue wire. Right, now I've got black and yellow. Sorry about that noise, that's the rain on the roof. So we're looking at about 18 volts there, so 18 to one. So now we're on the yellow and white wire. I've actually disconnected the uh, each side of the um, transformer from the valve socket as well. Just we're getting a bit of interference when I was trying it earlier. So we're just getting into that ballpark now of volt. And you can see now we've got 8.8 .8 volts there to one. So that's that on those two we've got an 8 to 1 turns ratio so now we're going black and green black and green is giving me about 23 there so 20 if we say 23 to 1 so black and green we've got now, and that's about 17 to 1. So that's black and white wire, so you can see that's virtually a 1 and 1, so that's obviously we're not be using those. So green and white there is around 10 to 1, and that's usually around my dinner time. And now we've got the wires green and blue. And you can see this one's a lot different to the others. Just get that, sorry about the rain again on the roof. So we're looking at about 80, 81 to one on that one. So green and yellow. It's about 28 to 1. 
you can see there. So now we're on yellow and blue. Twenty one to one. Right, out of the combination of all those wires, we've come up with five. And we've got to then eliminate the others were just miles out. Um, so now we've got to choose one or two of those, possibly only one really. And I've got a feeling it's going to be one. You can see there's various primary impedances there with those wires together. And you can see they range from 4,300, 5,100, um, 6,200 and 3,500. So let's, let's look at how we're going to choose those now. So I have on this transformer, we've got an, an AC voltage of 190. So if we times that by 1.414, that gives us 268 volts and actually we've got 263 volts on this transformer and I know that from when I powered it up without the tubes in it so I think when plate to cathode when these tubes are running we're going to have something like 250 volts so if we times that by itself that gives us 46,225 and if we divide that by 9, that gives us 5k. So according to that now, that means that at that primary impedance, we're looking at yellow and black. Assuming they, and even though, and I've had this before with transformers, even though all those... Uh, windings come out those different combinations of wires come out with those figures not all of these wires will work with a speaker so at the moment we don't know exactly what our plate voltage is going to be plate to cathode voltage this amps cathode biased plate to cathode voltage is going to be uh, until we've we've actually biased it up and got it running so for the time being I'm going to we're going to work off these five uh, five figures that we've got and to start with I'm going to wire that up uh, at 16 ohms at 5184 because that's the closest that we've got given I've only estimated those voltages though could be wrong so that's roughly where we're working at so what I'm going to do now is the, the moment of truth I'm going to power up this amp but I'm also um, I'm also going to use those, those resistors that's been delivered and we're going to balance up these heaters. We're actually going to do that first before we power this amp up. We're going to balance up these heater voltages and install those, um, install those resistors that we've got. Right, we're going to try and balance these heaters with the, using these resistors and we've got here and here. So this, the smaller 10 watt one is in is wired in with the preamp tubes which are wired in series uh, remember this transformer is 18 volts so two the the filaments on those two preamp tubes are 9 volts which that's why we've got them in series and the the output tubes are 16.5 volts and we've got those wired in parallel now there's two problems one is we, we we knew when we bought this transformer we got a little bit more voltage than we needed secondly i bought a 40 watt transformer and i have probably been better off with a 30 watt one right we've set this uh, set this up ready to uh, balance these heaters these filaments if you're in the states we generally call them heaters over here for some reason but never mind um filaments will do so we've got a 10 ohm resistor there at 25 watts a bit overkill but never mind um though the 15 watt one i used was getting a bit warm which is why i went for that that is reducing the volts on the output tubes they're wired in parallel 
and they take 16.5 volts. The preamp tubes are wired in series, they take 9 volts each, that's 18 volts. So the transformer that we've got on, on here to run these heaters is 18 volts. Um, I've got a balancing resistor on the preamp tubes, which is 8 ohms. And I've got a few more values, which we, we may have to add in to, to get these tubes balanced. Now there's a f there's one or two issues with this, which is why we, we're using these resistors. One is that this transformer is 220 volts in, as most of them are now that you find. Um, so we're running to, we'll be running 235 into it, so we're already 15 volts over. Um, the transformer is 2.2 amps, and I'd have been better off with a slightly smaller one, uh, 40 watts, 2.2 amps, 30 watts. I'm not doing the maths on it, but anyway, I'd have probably been better with a 30 watt transformer, slightly smaller. I got a 21 watt that come out at 1.1 1 .1 watts, and that was too small, really. So we've got 1.2 on these. Because each of these tubes draws 300 milliamps and we've got four, so 1.2 amps. Right, enough waffling. I'm going to go start going up with... Now the meter on the left is monitoring the output tubes, which we need to see 16.5 volts on. And the meter on the right is connected to one of the preamp tubes, which we want to see 9 volts on. So we're going up on the Variac. And we're at 209 volts on the Variac. If we keep going up. So we've just got to the 9 volt point now at 222 volts. Uh, but we're only 14 volts on uh, we're only 14 volts on the output tubes. So if we keep going up. So now we're at, we're just up to about 15 volts on those. On that, sorry, on the output tubes are up to 15 volts. So 5% over is 9.45 volts so I want to while I'm trying to balance these output tubes I want to make sure that doesn't go above five percent so we should be putting um, additional strain on those preamp tubes so we are not looking at somewhere in the region of and that's going to be over and that was the heat kicking in on the the heats the room and I've just switched it off and so that's so 15 volts and we fight we're about five percent over on those um we're about five percent over on those um preamp tubes so i think we need to up that resistor slightly and i've got a 10 ohms one here so we need to up the resistor on the preamp tubes so there we go that's 10 ohms so i'm going to swap that and you can see the voltage only goes up very slightly when we disconnect those preamp tubes it's gone up 15.3 so let's try 10 ohms and see what that gives us on these preamp tubes we're expecting that to drop and it has so now you can see oh it doesn't move oh it has dropped but not very much so we've now got 15.18 now actually i want to get 15.75 on these tubes and there's a reason for that and i shall tell you what that is later now we're up to 235 volts there so we've actually got we've actually maxed out on the uh, where we need to be on the variac and you can see we're virtually spot on with the preamp tubes we're a tiny bit under with the uh, power amp tubes so our 10 watt resistor here which is rather warm sorry our 10 ohm resistor here which is 25 watts is rather warm it 
it's 15.48 volts we've got on there I'm actually a bit dubious as of why this is getting worn now I'm going to find another pair of PL82s and pop them in and I've got another pair here there's a set I prepared earlier so I'm going to pop these in now and they're about the same 15.2 15.3 so they're not far far out so we're, we're very much matched on the uh, preamp tubes we just we need to find a shade more on these uh, on these output tubes so I'm going to borrow this 8 ohm resistor now I've got 8 ohms on there you can see that the 9 volt side's not moved at all. Now I've got 16.7 on there. And that is, if we're just using these PL82s, is about where we want it to be. Now what I wanted to do, we use these PL84s in here as well. Now they're 15 volts on the, on the heaters on those. Now at 5%, they come out at 5% over, they come out around 15.7, something like that. Let me just check that again on my calculator. 5% over on the um, PL84s would be 1575 on the PL82 is 5% under would be 15.6 nearly 15.7 so you can see that 5% over on the PL84s and 5% under on the PL82s would give me roughly what I need so we're pretty much there now for the PL82s they're pretty much balanced pretty well balanced 9.2 on there and I've got 235 on the Variac and we're almost spot on there 16 16.5 is what we should have 16.7 and we've got 9.13 and we've got two so yeah it's varying now so if I just shove the Variac up to 240 there let's see I mean and our mains does it that it mains voltage does hit that in the UK um occasionally i've got 9.5 so we just we just round about the five percent mark there just an, and that's over and now we've got 17.36 on here let me just turn that back down sorry it's 240 that's so 17.25 and that is about five percent over there 17.3 so allowing for that fluctuation in voltage um 240 volts um, although an electrician once told me that they've seen as much as 260 volts but I've never seen that normally when I check the mains uh, mains voltage coming in to my house it's around 235 volts 236 37 um, so that was if we drop going the wrong way So let's say we drop down to like 232 you can see now we're still in even 230 volts so even if there were a drop that actually at 230 volts that's exactly 16 volts and if you look at the um the preamp tubes they're exactly nine volts at 230 volts so we're within five percent generally over that 10 volt margin of 230 to 240 we're well within there so that's that is exactly how we need to balance these tubes now we've finished up with an 8 ohms resistor um i finished sorry we finished up with an 8 ohms resistor on the paralleled output tubes and we've finished up with a 10 ohm resistor on the preamp tubes
so those are the resistors we need to install um, although that eight that 10 watt resistor is getting rather hot um, although I can still just see me there just get my finger on that for a short time so it's hot but it's not it's not on fire um, but I think we could probably do with a slightly bigger resistor on there but that's balanced up there we at that we're pretty much there so at 235 we're around about 16.8 volts so if we were using the PL84s we are 10% over which is acceptable but you'd prefer it to be within 5% wouldn't you really so that is borderline to be able to use those tubes but I am going to try those tubes in it anyway because 10% over is not it's acceptable but 5 is best your best being around 5% right we've um, we're ready to roll with this we've um, got the HT fuse back in wired everything back up I've wired those resistors in you can just see them protruding over there and bolted them to the chassis I've added a virtual center tap because we'll no doubt we'll need one um, and I've just got to set that meter and we are ready to roll now I've got a meter the meter on the right is is monitoring the preamp stage and it's actually monitoring that uh, screen on that preamp tube um, because I'll get it I'll know when it's drawing current because I'll get a, a, a difference in the meter so if I just flick that on look I've, you can see the virtually the same 50 volts a piece that will begin to drop on that right meter as as it begins as the valves begin to conduct just gives me an idea of, of whether when it's conducting and if it's conducting now I've got the speaker wired up to uh, um, yellow and black it's now at 73 volts on the variac I just want to change this so I can monitor what's coming so I'm just changing the current meter on the wall so I can monitor the current and you can see if you watch the meters now we'll go up up to 100 volts and you can see there's a slight difference appearing in those meters now 124 volts and now you can see the meter on the right has already dropped by about five or six volts so that tells us there's some conductance already beginning 150 volts on the variac 144 we're drawing 120 milliamps off the mains which is nothing you can see now that's dropping 139 171 so we know we've got we've got conductance down the down the power nodes but i don't hear any sound and like i said about those those tappings on that transformer just because I got readings off them, doesn't mean to say the speaker's going to work. And I don't hear anything. And I've been at 169 on the Variac. I would have thought that I'd, I could hear something by now. Let's try a grid. No, there's nothing. So whatever we've wired that speaker to does not work so i need to go and figure out exactly what's happening with those but at least we know it's conducting properly oh what a numpty i am another plank moment there i've i've forgot to ground the cathode resistor and i only realized when when i looked at the uh, meter at full uh, when i was on full mains volt and it was still the valves uh, weren't conducting because I got 263 volts on this without the valves in and I'd still got 263 volts with the valves in so that told me that they weren't conducting preamp sides fine but um, yes 
that's with that slight modification I made with that switch I didn't realize I'd not that they needed to be ground well I did realize I'd just not noticed that I hadn't grounded them so we'll try again and see if we get any life this time well we're definitely conducting now because that voltage is fallen but we've got no sound from the speaker so we're going to shut that down I've gone for yellow and for black and blue and I've got sound through the speaker so I've also got quite a lot of hum but that doesn't surprise me so there we go 220 volts that's about what I guessed would that's about what I guessed would be uh, On there, that is humming a bit. So I don't quite know what's going on there. But yeah, 220 volts we've got there. So I would think plate to cathode, we're gonna have somewhere around 210, some, something like that. Right, so we fired it up. There's a few issues, so I'm going to have a look at those now. Right. After much ado, uh, we've got this amp running and uh, it's been quite a, a challenge uh, and the biggest problem that I've had with this is the amount of gain um, that is coming from that pentode of that PCF80 and that single triode, monstrous amounts of gain. So taming that is not easy and I think we're probably about 90% there now with it. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna go through a few things that I've done and then we're gonna have a listen to it. Um, I've got to get some knobs for it um, because I can't find a full set that will fit out of my stash. Um, so I'm looking for a pointer now. Right, we'll use this pencil. So we've got the heaters all running fine and um, these are the resistors here we've used you can just see the other one protruding these are the resistors we've used to balance up the heat of voltages and that's working just fine now I had a bit of a change um, change of heart with the with the output tube so we've got the PL82s in and uh, I've now got the PL84s in instead and the reason for that is was the effective load resistance matching on the output transformer um, it just wasn't right with the PL82s this is a 4k primary transformer and we were getting with the calculations I were getting uh, 5k nearly for about five and a half k I think so I put the PL84s in they they match perfectly so We've got a 4 ohms and a 16 ohms tap on there. And let's just put a bit more light on. There we go. So we've got a 4 ohm and a 16 ohms tap. Out of all those turn ratio tests we did, they were the only two combinations that worked, the 16 and the 4. Um, all the others, they just wouldn't connect a speaker to them. They just wouldn't work. So they were the only two in the end. So we've done that got those in so we've got a choice of 4 or 16 ohms I've been using it on the 4 ohms while I've been testing it and doing um, what else so yeah we've done that and we've biased those up 150 ohm uh, bias resistor I may increase that slightly and the reason for that is is this transformer is 160 milliamps those two PL84s are drawing 120 and then of course you've got everything else that's, that's drawing current um, with the PL82s in the transformer was stone cold it's, and it's not red hot but it's getting warm with the PL84s so I may just ease, ease bring that up slightly it's biased to 100% I always bias cathode bias at 100% but may just reduce it down 10% something but it's no big deal 
so that that that's taken care of uh, the output stage got the heaters running so the preamp stage and uh, we've got volume and master volume and uh, let me tell you that was uh, getting those balanced as well was not easy with these valves so the, the volume I put between the pentode of the PCF80 and the triode and uh, you just for some reason you would turn it down and it just wouldn't shut down completely there was a signal leaking through um tried everything couldn't shake that off so i've moved i've ended up moving that now um and it's a bit awkward really but basically now it that is just before the tone stack um master volume um is just before the phase inverter so we've got that in there what else um we rebalanced up this uh, screen on this um on this pentode on this pcf8 pentode because uh, we got I'd, I'd finished up i'd got more voltage on the screen than i got on the plate so we put a 680k in there and that's balanced that up um i also found another tube that works um with the same pin out of this socket in these stash of tubes i got and it's a it's a, a pcf802 and man that's got some gain i'm going to plug that in when we test it and show you that has really got some gain turns this amp into a complete filth machine so we've worked through i had a two um because i've been trying to tame this gain down um so I think that's coming out of the um, coming out of the second stage, out of the triode. We've got a four seventy k resistor, now, and I may up that a bit more. We had a two twenty in before, and I've obviously they get a bit uh, a bit dark when you put those in. So I've put a four seventy p farad across it just to give it a bit more life bit more brightness um swapped i had two 820 ohms on the um on the pentode and triode on the cathodes um i've got 820 on one and i think i've got 2.2k on the other so then we go and going on to this board we've got the cathodine there now all these coupling capacitors are 47 microfarad and I may drop those down to 22. I'm not 100% sure yet on those. There's still a few issues with it sound wise, but it is functioning. And remember that this is a project amp. Um, that's why it's not the tidiest thing in the world. This is not something that, you know, it, it's, it's like a prototype, if you like, project amps. The, there was some downsides with this is this this chassis is not really big enough to to you know have a have an amp this size it's a single ended amp chassis really to be you know we've crammed everything in it's not the tidiest thing but it's a prototype so basically i'm swapping components things are going in and out of it all the time if if in the end we end up with a brilliant sounding amp then we take that design and build it into something nice into a proper chassis and and it to be smart so these chassis i just use them for, for for prototypes for testing and doing and for learning more for, you know you never stop learning so there's always something to learn and you learn it a lot of it by experimenting and experience so i for instance and th things that i don't like about this i don't like these boards these are what like what they have in the Vox AC thirties. Don't like them, but unfortunately, there's no way you're going to get this amp to. You know, you're not going to cram all of this into that space without using these boards. So there's some things I don't like using in here, but unfortunately, necessary evil. So we've used these, say these boards. I'm sure they have a name, but I can't think what they are. Crap, <laughs> but never mind. So yeah, so this we're going to have a listen now. We've we've we've. We've got this thing running um, and we're going to have a listen and just see what uh, 
what else we need to change and swap and wrapping it. Right, we've uh, got this amp on the 4B12. You can see there's still no knobs on it yet, whatever. So we're going to have a listen. I'm just going to take this can off because we're going to swap this uh, this preamp tube, um, this PCF80 for this PCF802 in a minute. So but first we're going to have a listen. Strat going through it, um, and which has got a, a Seymour Duncan in the bridge. could benefit with is a bright cap over the volume this being one meg because when you turn this down and you turn this up you see it gets a bit muddy it also if we just go down onto the we'll go down onto the humbucker PCF80 Right, so we've stuck that in PCF802, let's just have a look Wait for it to warm up Now listen to how much gain we've got some alterations there if we're going to use have that tube as an alternative and we'll put the PCF80 back in so yeah you see a massive amount of difference on the gain there with that one so you can get quite a bit of overdrive out of this amp system of overdrives. <laughs> Thank you. 
you can see it's running and it doesn't sound bad but there's still some more tweaks needed uh, to get this amp uh, spot on uh, there's still a lot of gain coming off that preamp valve there, that PCF80 and some of that needs taming a bit more um, increasing some of the grid stoppers and whatnot just try and control some of the gain get this amp smoother uh, but basically it's there it's pretty close now so I'm going to leave this as part one so in part two um, we're going to get some knobs on this amp and we're going to change one or two components in it and just try and get it to sound a bit sweeter but basically we have proved that we can take these television tubes and build a guitar amp with them um, I've seen that done in hi-fi amps on, on quite a few forums and things but I've never never seen anybody use them in a guitar amplifier um, but you can match the voltages up and uh, balance the gain on them um, then yeah um, obviously you, you're not going to go and convert an amp that's that you know that you've already got um, into these tubes but if you if you were using them in a new build um, I suppose if you got an amp and the filament winding on the transformer had gone open circuit you, you know and you were looking to put some new tubes in anyway and you've got space to put this transformer on then that would be a possibility but generally you'd, you'd you know you'd use these amps if you were building something from scratch so yeah we just wanted to see if we could do that and I think we've achieved that um, some more tweaking and stuff is needed to get this amp um, it would benefit probably from a slightly bigger output transformer as well uh, but we use what we had really so so there we are so that's another one done um, look out for part two uh, thanks for watching it's been a strange one this hasn't it really um, but uh, thanks for watching and you all take care and I'll see you all in a future video so bye bye for now